Welcome to the Atheist Experience. It's Sunday, March 14th, 2021. I'm your host, Jim Burrows. Joining me this week is Dave Warnock. How you doing, Dave? Hey, Jim. I'm good. Good to see you, man. Yeah. So what's new with you these days? I got my vaccine. Yay. So awesome. I'm ready to get out and about. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to go crazy. Still, we, we still wear masks and stuff, but we're open to traveling a little bit, actually going to take a vacation to Costa Rica next week. So excited oh, to get nice. out and do some things since the world stopped about a year ago this week, it seems. Yeah, it does seem to be almost a year ago, uh, Pi Day. Um, yeah, so uh, for those who don't know who you are, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, um, I've done the show a few times, so most people will probably know who I am, but there's some new ones that may not. Dave Warnock, Dying Out Loud is the organization that uh, we actually started about two two years ago. I got diagnosed with ALS a little more than two years ago. We had an actual fuck ALS two-year anniversary party um, on the anniversary date, the 26th of February. Matt was mm -hmm. actually able to drop in. He did a little magic for us. It was a nice night. But um, shortly after that, I started doing the Dying Out Loud thing I've been doing for a couple of years. It's funny, someone on a recent show, I think it was Talk Heathen, and the comment said, yeah, hasn't Dave been dying out loud for like 10 years now? You know, is he, why is he still alive? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm still alive and, and doing better than I thought I would when I got diagnosed. I thought I may only have a couple of years to live. But anyway, the dying out loud thing became a thing that took off and we began to travel around the country and do shows like this and speak at secular events. And all of that got stopped with COVID a, a year ago. So we were, we were actually planning to be uh, in a lot of places speaking and even in Europe. So um, it's been a, it's been a neat uh, twist to the cards I was dealt to be able to connect with so many people all over the world and talk about things that matter to me, like life and death and what happens after death, nothing um, and things of that nature, because I used to be an uh, evangelical Christian for 37 years, and then I've been an atheist for about 10 years, so there's a big change there, and you look at things differently when you, a terminal illness, for instance, you look at that differently as an atheist than you would as a Christian, so um, that's a lot of what I talk about in the Dying Out Loud thing. Okay, and you've got some, some merchandise to include some interesting pieces of merchandise. Yeah, you know, when you think of merch, uh, you think of T-shirts and coffee mugs and things. But this this website that, that operates it for us, Threadless, they have everything. And so we've been talking about, you know, you can get a – there it is, the links to all my stuff. Um, you can get a um, – I think the link we haven't added there is TikTok. I've been TikToking lately. That's kind of crazy. But um, you can get a shower curtain with this exact image on it. And someone actually bought one of those recently. <laughs> I just got a picture today of this this new father yeah there we go I, so for a minimum fee you can shower with dave every day who wouldn't want to do that right exactly yeah exactly God. that's way bigger that's that's just too much of me i'll just tell you <laughs> yeah it seems like it um but well that's good so uh any anything coming up soon uh, you know what? There's no meetings happening, and and I'm just I'm happy to do shows like this. I, I'm working really hard on my book. I'm writing a memoir of my mm -hmm. life story, and it's it's creative nonfiction essentially because I'm taking a lot of license with it. So I am really working hard at that. I've been writing every day now for months, and I hope to have that out. I should be finished with the original draft of it probably by the end of May, first of June, and then after editing and all that, it'll be. It'll be out and ready for consumption later this year. So everybody, get you one of those because you're gonna, you're gonna. I think it's, I think it's, it's coming along really well. I'm happy with with how it's coming out. Awesome, good stuff. All right. Well, we are the Atheist Community of Austin. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting the separation of religion and government and positive atheist culture. We have merch, too. You can go to uh, bit.ly slash AEN merch and get T-shirts, hoodies, and other cool stuff. I don't know if we have shower curtains or not. Uh, you can become a <laughs> member for this channel for as little as a dollar a month, which will give you access to icons and other cool stuff. If you're watching us live, you can donate below the chat. Google and YouTube no longer take a cut from that since we are a nonprofit organization. And every dollar you donate helps put the atheist experience as well as talk heathen, the nonprofit's truth wanted and secular sexuality. Uh, you can become a member at patreon.com slash the atheist experience or get the link in the chat. 
There's also two Facebook groups that we've been promoting, which are the Atheist Experience Fan Group, as well as the Atheist Experience Private Fan Group, which you can find the links for in the chat as well. The show is only possible with the work of the people behind the scenes. Let's take a look at the crew. Where is that Motley crew? There they are. Hey, crew. I think we're missing a cat, aren't we? Or did he run away? <laughs> All right. Um, they're screening your calls, working on audio, we're working on video, writing the show notes, and moderating all of our chats. Uh, we are a live call-in show, and we give priority to theists. We've got some open lines. Give us a call at one five one two nine or nine or one nine or two four two, or from your computer at tiny.cc/callaxp. You ready to take some calls, Steph? Let's do it. All righty. So, first call is from a theist. Let me actually click the link. There we go. Hey, Joseph from Nevada. You wanted to talk about evolution and classic definitions of species. Yes. Um, well, thank you for taking my call. I actually don't do a lot of uh, calling into atheist shows, uh, but I have called in the past. I, I spoke one time in my life to Matt Slick, uh, or sorry, Matt, Matt Dillahunty, and um, <laughs> it, it was really great. Yeah. So I'm, I'm honored to call again and talk with you guys. Um, now I understand uh, if my uh, if my question uh, if uh, if you can't answer it that's fine because it's more of a biology and genetic question and it's okay. completely fine if you if you can answer like I don't know that's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say to to the caller or, or, or sorry the the other guest that you have on um, I appreciate. Uh, uh, that you were a Christian in the past and you've changed now uh, with my, with the political climate as it is right now, it's actually reinforced my Christianity because I see now there's a correlation with uh, atheism and I think uh, liberalism or, or Democrats. It's kind of weird. The, the political climate in, in America, but it's kind of reinforced uh, my uh, belief. I'm sorry. On to, on to my question on, um, on uh, evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would give me just 45 seconds to lay this out, and then you can give me a response. Um, and this is really important to me because I've done a lot of research on this topic, and I understand this argument. And usually when I lay this out, um, I get ad hominems, or I, I, I don't get a, um, just go ahead I don't and lay get it a out. good response. Usually people beg the question, or they don't you know, give me a scientific yeah, this, response. Right. So, so let's uh, go ahead this, and, this, and get to the question. The uh, research that I've done. Okay, uh, sorry, this is the, the research that I've done. Uh, uh -huh. When we look at uh, human evolution, the, the uh, theory is that ape, came, uh, ape evolved into man. We're hominids. We came from uh, apes, and we evolved into man. And uh, we look at species. The classical definition of a species is basically, um, if they're related, they have similar characteristics, uh, and they can interbreed. And that makes a... Um, that makes a species that is related. So we can look at that in nature. We can see a dog and a wolf, which are subspecies. A wolf uh, has the same characteristics, and they can interbreed with dogs. Uh, some species that aren't the same species but can interbreed would be a zebra and a donkey. Um, now, their, their offspring won't be fertile. But when we look at apes, we have similar characteristics, but we can't interbreed. And so I've done a little research into this, and, and why is that? If we have 98% um, uh, genetic similarities. So I looked at first the chromosome argument, uh, but that doesn't work because the chromosome argument, basically we have animals and things in life that have the same chromosomes as humans. Uh, we have 46 chromosomes, and chromosomes usually are used in paternity tests, right? We, we have a parent, a dad, and a mom, and we can use our chromosomes to line that up to see if the child is is ours or not. So the chromosome is gone. Uh, the DNA argument, uh, they said it's 98% close. And so I looked at other animals, like a pig, which mm -hmm. is actually closer genetically. And we can That's take fair. pig yeah. organs, like the heart. Uh, we can use that in transplantations in hospitals. So we can take organs from pigs, which are very close to humans, if we're looking at their eyes and their organs and their skin. They're basically mm -hmm. uh, like humans, very close. Um, mm -hmm. So I looked further, and I looked at what is the oldest human race on the planet. 
Well, it turns out uh, it's a race called the Aboriginals. And if you know the history of the Aboriginals, they were actually um, persecuted and they were thought to be um, the, the missing link from ape to man. They actually look like cavemen and they're around today. They live in Australia. And mm-hmm. so I looked at the fossils, the, the early, the first fossils that we that were ever found, they were found above uh, on surface level. So I thought, well, wait a minute. They found fossils on the ground above that weren't fossilized. And we have Aboriginal people and we have a disease called agromegaly, which actually uh, makes people okay. look so, like. Well, yeah, I, 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 I've heard enough. I can I can pretty much stop you there. Um, one, I would suggest so looking finish. at. I just finished. You know, I, I, I can I can stop you right there because I, I I can tell right now that you have not done any research on uh, any type of of uh, reading actual papers or actually looking at anything. But maybe I mean I would imagine that you probably only looked at AIG and other sources that agree with you um, because a lot of what you say is all over the place and doesn't make any coherent sense. You can go to some place like. Um, uh, oh, shoot, I f- thought I had the right s- s- website up here, but I don't. There's a website that'll show you the Life's Family Tree, and I'm trying to pull it up here so I can actually get it. Yeah, Evo uh, Janeo, um is on here, and they have the Tree of Life and the whole diagram, and you can actually look at it and look at how they classify life and what that Tree of Life looks like. It's not complete by any stretch of the imagination because it doesn't cover everything, but it does cover enough. Um, and so uh, do more research. Um, I know like on, on YouTube, um, crash course has got some really good stuff on biology and some other things. I just don't think you've done enough research to actually, uh, disprove anything coming close to evolution, coming close to disproving evolution, um, or to actually answer your questions. And I certainly don't have enough biology background to, to go into those details. Um, but I do have enough to know that you, you have not read, you're, you're not well enough read yet to actually answer your own questions. And then were you to do, were you to actually, um, go into biology and actually take a cohesive course, you'd, you'd actually answer your own questions. Dave, did you want to add anything to that? Answer. Uh, well, I, I, I'm a, obviously, I'm certainly not a biologist or don't have extensive knowledge on these things, but I'm guessing, Joseph, if you're trying to disprove or discredit evolution, then you are going to say that you believe that we came from Adam and Eve. Is that correct? Yeah. Am I, am I still on the phone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, you're oh, still yeah. here. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I look at what I do know, what I can see. I can see genetic atrophy, meaning humanity is going downward. We're not going upward. Mutation. What do you mean? What do you mean by downward and not upward? Can you define that for me? What do you mean by downward and not upward? Yeah, well, I can give you, I can give you an example if you look at uh, the second law of thermodynamics. Now, people say we're a... No, 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 no you're already no. misinterpreting the second law of this, uh, thermodynamics, and that has nothing well, to do with going up, up or down. To lay it out. No, I mean, the problem is I've heard this argument before, and I really don't want to hear another complete and total it's... misunderstanding of the thermo, second law of thermodynamics again. So when you say going up or down, what do you mean is, in terms of evolution? Okay, so uh, you are a copy of a copy of a copy. Your parents are passing their genetics to you. No. We're not no. anything to that. We're not copies. Word. We are not copies. That is entirely 100% incorrect. We are not copies. So we, I am a combination of my biological parents' genetics. I am not a copy of them. So what's adding to your genetics? Mutations and viruses. What's adding diversity what is adding diversity to your genetics? How are we increasing mutations it? and viruses? And don't ask me the specifics on the viruses. Not I'm not entire. Pardon? Mutations don't add to your genetics. Yes, they do. They add new. Now, so let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, if I take and copy out exactly word for word all the works of Shakespeare, and I only start making small changes, one in say 500 copies. How many changes do I have to make before I get a new, a completely different work of Shakespeare? 
Well, no, you're, now you're going to Shakespeare. I'm talking about in nature. Do you no, mean- no, no, no. I'm talking about how many changes does it take before you decide you have something new? And I'm using the works of Shakespeare as an example, as a metaphor for that. So oh, oh. as I continue to copy works of Shakespeare and I'm making one change per, say, 500 copies, how many, to- how many changes before you say I have a completely new work of Shakespeare? Okay, can I ask you a question? Are you taking away from the work or are you adding something to it? Are you just rearranging the letters? Yes, all of the above. In some cases, I'm just simply rearranging letters. Some cases, I'm adding words. In some cases, I'm dropping words. Nothing is being added. Nothing's added. No, no, no. So I'm actually adding words on occasion. Yes, I just said that. Where, Where is that addition coming from? Who's adding it? It's just a mistake in copying. That's all it is. Look, to add it to that. If, if yeah, you can, you can actually duplicate. If, if I take a word and duplicate it, I've added it. If I add a completely different word, I've still added words, right? Well, let's let's just say for, for hypothetical reasons that Shakespeare book only has four words. I am the Lord, right? And we can rearrange those words however many times we want. We would have to take away some for them to make new words. But no, we, I wouldn't have to. I, I could simply put it, I could simply transcribe in there, not. I am not the Lord. And now I have a whole new sentence, don't I? Right, but but for the other words, we would have to take away for that to make a sentence. Or else we would have like gibberish at the beginning of the word. Exactly. That is exactly what happens when we, that is exactly what happens in DNA, right? We get copies of DNA that, that are get ignored. We get additions to DNA. Sometimes it comes from mutations, just changes so that we get a uh, new set of, of, um, uh, of alleles and chromosomes. And sometimes they, they get injected from viruses. And viruses is not the right word. I know somebody who's much better at this biology than I am is screaming their head off at me right now, and I apologize for that. Mm-hmm. But that is exactly where this new stuff comes in. And this is why I say you haven't read enough to even begin right. Right. to I, talk about this. I mean, I, to... Sir, sir I, and, and this is where I come in where I'm saying, like, you're begging the question. You're just saying it is. I can give you examples in nature where, for example, a chihuahua, we can breed big dogs down to chihuahua. But see, here's the problem. I can, sh- I can, I can actually go in. So you can actually go out and do this research yourself because I don't know where it is off the top of my head. But you can go in and look at viruses that inject DNA into our DNA. And you can go in and look at how DNA gets mutated and all the ways that it gets mutated to realize how that stuff happens. So you can go into all all of the, the, the dog breeding and all the rest of it and okay, fine, but I'm actually talking about looking at how the DNA itself gets changed at the DNA level. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where yeah. you got to go. Let me let me interject, Joseph. Joseph uh, rather, I mean, we could probably spend the whole show arguing about evolution, um, and and I don't know enough about it to our uh, basically to help in that regard at all. But but let's say you were able to disprove evolution. Where does that leave us? So what is what I'm going to say to you? Where does that leave us that leaves- in terms of how a God? How, can can let me finish? Where does that leave? Let's say you disprove evolution. Where does that leave us in terms of how a God of any kind interacts with humanity today? Well, uh, you don't even necessarily have to say that uh, if you're not a Christian, you could say some people believe that we were seeded, you know, perhaps another life that's more advanced than us seeded the earth. That would be more practical than to say that we came from nothing and we evolved. Into- I, I, you're missing my question. I don't care how we got here. Let me just jump ahead. It, I'm not arguing with you how we got here, whether we came from another planet or apes or Adam and Eve. What does that have to do with where we are now? Let's talk about where we are now. How does a God anywhere, what, what is a God anywhere doing for any of us? You said, you said that the way things are changing, it makes you, it makes you more certain of your faith and that you're more co- convinced that you want to be a Christian, that you are a Christian. Um, so, so why? Where Where is God in all of this? Right. Um, well, that is a difficult question, and it does uh, inquire yeah. your own personal experience. 
for that because no 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 because everybody's personal experience is different let me answer your question you can't you can't well you're going down you're going down the road of personal experience because then you say well i've experienced god well so did the guys who drove planes into into the towers at 9 11 they experienced their god but you if you're a christian you would say that their god is not accurate and yours is you can't just use anecdotes for evidence that doesn't work that way Right. I, I agree with you, sir, but I think, okay. in my opinion, the truth is the most important thing. And wherever the exactly. truth leads you, whether it's contradicting, if your evidence is contradicting, then the truth is what matters to me. And if you guys are giving me uh, antidotal or if you're giving me a que- beg- if you're begging the question and telling me I'm wrong, but you're not giving me any evidence or things that I can look well, at. No, so Jim, I, did actually, Jim did that. Jim did that early on. That. Yes, he did that. that right out of the gate. You're telling me to go and I'm, I'm, I'm approaching it a different way. You and Jim yeah. can argue evolution all day long. I'm saying to you, Joseph, what does it matter? Where is God now? Show me evidence if you want truth. What? Show me what? true evidence that there's a God actively involved in the world today. You're not listening. You're talking. Some people believe the earth is flat. What does it matter if, if it's not flat? I, oh, I don't it, know what it, that oh, has oh, to do oh, with oh, what <laughs> I asked you. Not flat. <laughs> Well, I'm asking you to show me evidence of a God actively involved in the lives of humans today. Not your personal experience, not something that you feel. Experience about God. I called in to talk about evolution and the um, discrepancy. Right. And so again, and we did I, that. We did right. that for a long time. You yeah, talk and about research, but I'm giving you the research right now. I've looked at the. No, so I'm and I'm telling you to go look at counter research. And I told you to go look at counter research and and to go look at real research and to go look Ken at Ken Ham has his research. Ken Ham has answers in Genesis research. Right. Are you supposed to just accept that as truth? No. <laughs> that isn't research. Come on, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ken AIG is not good research at all. Um and there are a number of really good YouTubers out there, Vice Prano and uh who does a really, really good job of of showing you the real science. And again, I've told you to go look specifically for particular types of research. And I've apologized for not having that at the top of my mind and at the top of my head. This is not my area of expertise. So if you want to go look at how uh, information gets added to DNA, you're going to go look at DNA mutations and how they mutate. You're going to go look at how viruses directly inject genes into DNA. Those are two sources of research you can go look at and find out for yourself. I apologize for not being expert enough to actually go into it. Can I give my final thought? Go ahead. Uh, okay, my final thought is um, you basically, your your uh, refute of my research is to tell me to go research and to look into what I don't know. And would yes. I be correct in saying that if you don't know about God, you have to go research and look at the Bible, and then you would understand what well, it means. Let, 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 okay. I, I, I did is that, that for is that 37 your, is that years, your, Joseph. Yeah. I did that for 37 yeah. years. And Joseph, I did as well. And I'm on, a, I'm on a show right now hoping that somebody will give us proof of God, and you have failed, sir. Completely, utterly failed. I never talked about God. I called about evolution. Yeah, and like I said, I'm on the show asking people to give me proof of God. We talked about evolution. That's nice. But, yeah, I'm on the show once a month. Matt Delahunty's on here almost every week. All of us, you know, there are a number of us who, who <sighs> have looked for it and haven't found it. So, And you said if we cl- should research this and find it in the Bible, I've read the Bible upside down, inside out, cover to cover, you preached it, taught it. 37 years, right. and I'm here telling you I don't see evidence of God in the Bible. You would understand. The Bible's... What's yeah. that? That's basically what you're telling me to do. You're telling me to go research, and then I would understand. And I'm telling you, if you don't understand God, you need to go research, and you need to go you, you need to go talk to theologians, and then you would understand. We we have. Oh, okay. That's a good have. idea. I'll do and, that. And Dave you know was what? a theologian. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Good <laughs> idea. I'll go to Bible All school. All right. Thank you very much, Again. Joseph. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. Yeah. So um, we're telling you to go look at research because you haven't done enough. There's yeah. more evidence for evolution than there is for gravity. Where do they so, get this stuff, man? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is quite fun. All right. Let's go to 
make sure I'm clicking the right link here. Alejandro in California. How are you doing today? Yes, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Good. Can you hear me? So dichotomy, uh, dichotomy of exists versus doesn't exist. I have no idea what this means. So what do you mean? Is this a science show today? I, mean, I don't know. No, is this a, it's a simple philosophical uh, explanation. Okay. Which is the question, Does is there a third state? Or are we limited to exists versus does not exist? Huh? Oh. Explain it. Yeah. Oh. Okay, go okay, ahead, well, Alondra. I guess you have a theory here. Go ahead and present your theory. Well, if, if there's only two options, then you can't say, I don't know. You can't say, I lack a belief, because every time you advance, God does not exist, you are... Ah, so, okay. You, you so can't here, here, give from one and take from the other without taking from here, the other. Here, 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 here's the problem right, that you have. So for any statement that has a truth value, I cross the road, I'm right. sitting in a chair, right? There are, there are two possible values for that. Either it's true or false. Either I'm sitting in a chair or I'm not. However, I can have three positions, and there's a fourth one that is just a, a me-ism because I think it's funny, but there are three positions of philosophy you can have. You can accept this, the claim that I'm sitting in a chair as true. <laughs> you can reject right. that and accept the false. And you can say, I don't know. And the fourth one that I think is funny is I don't care. But those <laughs> three positions, I don't know, except is true and except is false, are the three positions you can have on a single truth claim. So you are correct. Well, God either is, there exists or he positive. doesn't exist. And I, but I can take, right. and both claims have to be proven, right? And I can say I don't right. know to both claims. Well, that's the problem, Alejandro. Alejandro, did you say earlier that we we can't we can't say I don't know? You're saying that that's not an option. That doesn't that that doesn't correspond to any realizable position. Yes, it does. That's like that saying the, the answers position. are black or white. You're saying purple. It's, it's no. Not an I'm saying I don't know yeah, if it's black or nowhere. white. Well, then you're stating a belief. No. Yes, yeah, I'm, saying I'm, saying I'm saying a lack that of belief. Nothing to do with reality. Pardon, Alejandro. Do you know? Do you know what an agnostic is in terms of faith? An agnostic terms is of, an unrealizable uh, position. I've, I'm going over that agnosticism is not a possible position. It's impossible yes. for it to be true. Th th this, is, this, is well, this is well accepted in philosophy. Um, in fact, not only is it well accepted in philosophy, it's part of the basis of our own legal system, right? Because the legal system doesn't prove guilt or innocence. The legal system only proves guilt. And if someone is proven, and, and the, the phraseology is, is, that we use is also very specific, as in not guilty, does not mean they're innocent, right? It just means we don't have enough evidence to convict them of being guilty. And so we're taking the I don't know position to the truth, to the uh, innocent position, to the innocent client. That's how ju our jurisprudence works. Under Alejandro, if, if you were, if you asked me, argument. if you, I'm, I'm not trying to, if you asked me, is there a God, I'm perfectly fine right. in saying, I don't know, because I don't know, and you don't either. Now, I, I'm also fine in saying, Ooh. I'm an atheist, I'm Ooh. an agnostic atheist. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you're saying, what? you just said, it's impossible to know the truth. That's what you just claimed. No, no I didn't no, say that. No, 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 Alejandro, no, you're putting said, words in his mouth. I, don't tell me what I said. I know what I fucking said, Alejandro. Now you piss me off because I know what I said, and I'll say it again. If you ask me, uh -huh. I'm going a little mad on him here because Matt's not here, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> you ask me, is there a God? I'm saying to you, I don't know, and I'm saying to you, you don't either. I'm not saying we can't know. In fact, my position is I'm an agnostic atheist, which means, listen a minute, listen a minute. I said, I'm an agnostic atheist. You're not listening. I'm an agnostic atheist, which means I don't know, but I'm open to evidence. If you show me evidence for a God, I can be convinced of that. But so far, I haven't seen that. So that makes me an atheist, atheist. But I'm also an agnostic because I'm saying I don't know. Now, what's wrong with that? So how do you know I don't know? Well, how do you know I don't know? <laughs> he didn't say that. 
He didn't say you I didn't said know. you don't know either because you don't I'm sorry, have evidence did. My of it. Said that? You don't have evidence of it. If oh, you do know oh. there's a God, this is the oh. place to bring the evidence. Ah, okay. So we're clear. You don't know if I have evidence or not. You just 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 assume. I'm assuming you don't because if you did, I would think you would want to present it to the world because the world has been waiting. Ah. This show has been on for 15 years waiting for evidence. More than that, but well, yeah. Like I said, I'm going to go one step at a time. All right, and the first step. Okay, you're going to well, you're going to slow it down for us. Thank you. That's right. And we're going back to the idea of whether there's a third state. Now, in reality... No, 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 no. Third state is incorrect. It's position on a claim. Not the claim itself. The claim is either true or false. The positions can be, I accept the claim is true, I accept right. the claim is false, or I don't know if the claim is true and I don't know if the claim is false or the I don't know or skeptical position, right? You're confusing the position you can take on a claim and the claim itself. Right. Well said, Jim. To be a possible reality. Because I don't know, those are, those are your positions. Those are your beliefs. That's the equivalent of saying you can go, uh, the ans possible answers are black and white. No, it's not, it's not my belief. It's my lack of belief. Okay, your lack of belief can't be a real position. There's no, there, it's not, now you can say I don't know, but the universe doesn't care if you know or not. It either is or isn't. That is absolutely correct. Yeah, we're not arguing with what is, is or isn't. isn't but... So let, 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 me, let, me, let me do this for you. Let, let's, let's try another example. <laughs> There's a teapot. Is there or is there not a teapot floating in between the orbits of Earth and Mars? Ah, Russell's teapot. I'm familiar with that. Now, I really don't think we need to go in examples because that's just there. Several so weeks. either so either there is a teapot in orbit around, between the orbits of Earth and Mars, or there isn't. Is that true or is, that's correct? Is it not? That's true. Now let me. What is your position on that? Well, my position is there's not. Obviously. And prove but, it. Yeah. How do you know there's not? Well, Why would you take a position if you don't have knowledge of what that is? Oh, it's very simple. There's been no manned effort to put a put a teapot in a Martian orbit, uh, and teapots don't magically come into being. So the bulk of the evidence is there is no Russell's teapot, and that's what mm -hmm. my position on a god is. But at the end of that, I don't. I would have to say well, I don't so, empirically know for sure that there's not. Right, and I I would actually say that how did you eliminate astronauts with a sense of humor tossing a teapot off the moon? without telling anybody. Well, you see, this is a conversation where you're going to start to argue what is. Well, so you, see, you no, I'm just you... pointing, I, I'm just pointing out that personal incredulity is not, is, is basically what you stated because you said, I can't think of any other way to do it. The, the only position you should take is I don't know, but it seems unlikely. It seems astronomically unlikely, and science says we follow the probability, you, not what is possible. You see, you're going to try. Why to is that? Why is that not okay to do with a god then? If you can do it with a teapot. Oh, I, uh, oh no, no, no! I can do that with a god, but like I said, I'm okay. going one step at a time. Okay, and the step is that if you say, if I say God exists for whatever reason, and you have no argument to the contrary. You got nothing. So it's, no, it's I, I, we have lots of arguments to the contrary. What? There's only fi between 50 and 100 arguments for God that have ever been proposed, as far as I'm aware. All of them have been defeated. Okay. All of them have problems. <laughs> Some of them yours. don't even get you to God. I'm sorry. What was that last point? I didn't hear you. And some of them don't even get you to God. Ah, all right. Well, so we can agree that there's only two possible realities. God exists or God does not exist. And we agree That's on correct. That. And there are three there are three positions I can take. Well, in one of those positions is not doesn't correspond to anything real. No, it doesn't because I don't have enough evidence to know what is real. 
That's the I don't know position, okay. is that you have not presented enough evidence for me to know what is real. Ah, so now, so you believe, if I understand you correctly, that because you don't know that uh, that's a third position, that's, a, that's like a belief, like I said. No, it's a lack of belief. You can't, Jesus. It's lack it's a Let me ask you this, belief. Alejandro. Let me ask you this, Alejandro. Can you tell me the difference between these two statements? I believe there's no God. Or, and the second statement is, I don't believe there's a God. Do you recognize the difference between those two statements? One is a lot latter is an argument from ignorance. <laughs> it's an what? argument for what? lack of information. Jesus Christ, dude. No, it's an argument from ignorance. You, the, the idea no, that an atheist is saying, I believe there's no God, is false. That's not a statement of belief. Atheism is not a statement of belief. It's a response to a statement of belief. Well, that's called an argument from ignorance. You're saying I'm no, right. No, 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 no. It is not an argument. An argument from ignorance almost always uses some version of I can't imagine any other way or I don't know how it could be any other way. And we're not making either of those statements. No, we're I'm literally open to the saying, evidence. Right. I'm literally saying that you have not given me enough evidence to accept either claim as true. And therefore, I don't know what real what the reality of the situation is. So let's be specific, Alejandro. What is your claim for God? Mm -hmm. What is your claim? What is my claim for God? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I'm not there yet. We're we're moving forward now. This problem is that no, we're not. No, we're, we're not. We're, we're, we're you're, not you're, you're still move you're still miss, you're still missing. So you're missing such a fundamental point of, of, of in philosophy that it is really really hard. For, for to move mm -hmm. forward off of this. And so, because you don't understand that a claim has to have evidence that has to be proven true or false. Right. You need evidence for either. If you don't have evidence, you don't get to claim either one. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You just argued that you get to right, be right by default. You get to argue. No, no, no. The I don't know position is neither right nor wrong. It is Alejandro. It is a complete lack of Alejandro's playing a of, game of, of gotcha. That. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, and he, yeah. Um, th this is this is really, really simple stuff. I think you're working really hard not to understand it, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you're why you don't understand that. If you want to accept a claim as true, you need evidence. If you're going That's to it. accept the claim as false, you're going to need evidence. If you don't have evidence for either, the position to take is I don't know until such time as the claim is proven. Okay. So, do you have proof that God does not exist? I don't make that. We didn't claim. make the claim. That's the one who makes the claim has to bring the proof. <laughs> we are not That's claiming. The burden Alejandro, proof. I'll say it again. We are not claiming there's no God. We're not saying I believe there's no God. We're saying I don't see evidence for a God. Therefore, I don't believe in one. Big difference. Understand the difference. It's not hard. If there's only, if there's only two possibilities. You, oh my God. So hold on. L l let's back up. Let, let, let's back up, Alejandro. Let's back up. When I say when I say that there are in fact two possibilities and three positions, what is the difference between the two? Po when I, what do you understand when I say that that there are? And I'm agreeing with you that there are only two possibilities and three positions. Do you understand the positions and possibilities? Now the thing is, as soon as you dispute my claim all right now let me give you a basic example we can go with marbles or pregnancy okay we'll go with pregnancy all right if a woman says i'm pregnant and you say i don't believe you you are automatically saying she's not no, no. what the hell it's not this hard no Alejandro. that would also need if evidence. a woman says to me i'm pregnant i'm going to say to her okay i'm sure you'll have evidence of that if not right now then in several months what's hard about that i don't believe the claim you are still saying i don't believe <laughs> no. no no i'm not no. why would i say to a so, woman who tells you she's pregnant I don't let's, her? let's try why it this way say that? yeah alejandro let's try it this way on any sta any statement that has a truth value there is a claim that the truth that the uh statement is true and there's a claim that the statement is false 
both those claims have to be proven. If both of them lack sufficient evidence to warrant belief, you have to say, I don't know. Uh, no, you don't. Like I'm going to say, I don't believe you. Why in the hell would I say that to a woman who told me she's pregnant? Okay. That's bullshit. Listen, quit talking. I'm talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. I'm talking. So if she's making a claim that inserts itself into my life in some way, then yeah, I have to take a position on it. So you really used a pretty poor analogy, to be honest with you. I don't care if she's pregnant or not, and the evidence will show itself soon enough. So I'm not going to say to her, I don't believe you're pregnant. But if she says, you have to believe I'm pregnant or I'm going to shoot you or I'm, you're going to go to hell, then I've got to take a position pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And that's what Christianity does. Evangelical Christianity says, you have to believe in this version of God or you're going to suffer some penalty for not believing. And because of that, I'm forced to take a position. I'm saying, I don't see the evidence for that. So until you show me evidence, I'm going to say, I don't think you're true. I don't think that's correct. What is wrong with that? First one was Zoroastrian. Why do you have a first why one, do you have a problem with that? Well, first hmm? of all, I'm a Zoroastrian. And second of all, uh, Pascal's wager pretty much establishes that that's no. fundamentally Pascal's accurate. Pascal's wager is garbage. Position. Pascal's wager, oh. what? Yeah, Pascal, first of all, Pascal's <laughs> wager is garbage. Second, I, I don't what? see where, no. how you even got there. Anyway, Alejandro, we, we've, we've dealt with this enough. On any particular claim, the claim can be true or You're false. Me. You can have up to three positions. There are three positions you can take. That's simply the way philosophy works. That's the way You're making this way harder than it needs to work. be. And that's just... I reality. I'm sorry you don't accept you, that. Thank you very much. To, have a nice and day. And you're not Alejandro. I, I hung okay, up. buddy. We'll see you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's one that he just wanted to argue. He wanted you hit you hit the nail on the head. He wanted to make it harder than it was. Yeah. Um oh man. Right. Sorry, I okay. kind of lost my shit with him. He's irritating. <laughs> he irritated. Yeah, he he was getting there. Um Okay, and this is Pa in Florida who, oh, we may actually get an answer to the question. All right, present your evidence, Pa. Oh, boy. I'm watching you on stream, but it's on mute, so no worries. Um, You're not on mute. First of all, uh, quick comment. Um, Dave said that he was an evangelical Christian early on in the show. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Used to be, yeah. So I, I uh, identify with that. When I was young, I was in a church. It was a Baptist church. They didn't teach me about the Holy Spirit. I grew up not understanding what that was, except some vague notion of Trinity, which nobody could explain. Uh, more or less, um, that church was destroyed. The pastor cheated on his wife on a missionary trip. It was a very terrible situation, and I kind of, as a Christian, was very disappointed in all that, and it kind of turned me away from Christians in general, knowing that the man that I looked up to was guilty of this terrible sin, et cetera. So fast right. forward, I'm 33 years old. I go on a missionary trip to Haiti. I witness uh, first person someone being uh, exercised of a demon. <clears throat> now, okay. you're going to say personal experience doesn't count as evidence, and I agree uh, with Actually, you. no, that's not the evidence. first place I'm going. That is not the first place I'm going. How'd you know it was a demon? That's the first place exactly. I'm going. So, a hundred percent. You are a hundred percent correct. I hundred percent agree with you. I did not. I had no idea. All I saw was something that looked like what was described in the New Testament. The woman would be the only person who would know that. The one that was actually exercised, and even then, it's kind of this gray area, so, right? So, so if I you don't know that the woman was, if you don't know the woman's actually possessed by a demon. How did you eliminate outright fraud? Absolutely. Uh, in, in the process of going through logical deductions, that is an absolute possibility. So I cannot eliminate that. Isn't uh, that the most likely possibility? It is a possibility. Absolutely. Is it, 100%. It, no, is it the mo it, it's the most likely possibility, right? I would say, I would say the majority of Christians uh, today are i would say not very especially the the charismatic type they are not honest 
they do want money. They do want to make you believe that they can heal you. That's not that's yet, not an answer to the question. They, isn't it? Isn't question. fraud the most likely answer? Absolutely. 100%. Okay. So you would say and, you witnessed a, a fraudulent event that you think is proof for God. No, 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 no. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm sorry. Give me 30 seconds and I'll get there. Okay, okay. you've got exactly okay. 30 seconds. Go. All right. So I went back home. I, I signed up to do a race. It's called a Spartan race. I was very excited about it. I accidentally dropped a big piece of furniture on my toe. It broke my toe. We're talking about swollen, bones broken, uh, huge bleeding, etc. And I was very uh, distraught about that. I actually attended a church at the time that was Pentecostal. I went to the church. There was a healing service. And on the healing service, my toe was prayed for. It was healed there. Bones, swollen, all that uh, were healed. The swelling went down. It wasn't purple anymore. So this is more personal experience. I got 10 seconds left. So no, you got, you're, you're actually out of time. You're, you're actually out of time. And we, we can just deal with this there. So you <sighs> broke some bones. You went to healing service, and it was healed right there. From the time you broke the bones until the time you went to the healing service, how much time was there? 12 hours. Really? 12 hours. And your swelling went down, and do you have actual, do you have before and after x-rays? So this is what I'm going to post in chat. It's not me. It's another link to a actual published medical article. No, 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 no. Do you have before and after pictures of no. your broken bones? I do not, no. So how do you know your bones are broken? Uh, I, I have broken bones in the past and I have had them x-rayed. This was a feeling. So you are correct. Uh, okay. of, uh, Paul, let me let me jump in. Let well, me jump in. When you yeah. when you referenced when I said I was evangelical, I used that in very broad terms to to uh, cover all of the uh, strains of Christianity that have to do with um, evangelism and the idea that you need a, a savior to be saved. I was actually charismatic, Pentecostal, spoke in tongues, believed in healing, prophecies, all of that. Have seen all of that in my with my understanding at the time thought i saw demons cast out thought, thought i saw legs lengthened you know what i never saw i never saw an amputee grow a limb back i never saw a baby with cancer healed um i i think i think you need to rethink your idea about a god who selectively heals or selectively casts out demons from someone in haiti um because a god that would heal your broken toe would have a lot of splaining to do at the children's hospital in Memphis where babies are born with bone cancer and don't get healed to Christian parents who are praying for such healing, babies who are born, kids who are uh, struck with, with diseases from birth, people who are born in famine-stricken countries and never live to see their fifth or sixth birthday. But God's going to heal your broken toe and God's going to cast out a demon for some person in Haiti randomly and selectively here and there around the globe every now and then. I don't think you want to serve a God who's that arbitrary and that selective and that callous when it comes to people who are really crying out for such miracles. Okay, so I, I agree with you that that is like an understanding of God that's, you know, beyond our recognition, I guess. But the, the last link that I'll post is a woman that had macular degeneration. She you just missed my whole point. Yeah, you, you were waiting you, you for your turn to You missed my whole point. You, you missed I don't the give entire a shit. point. I don't give a shit about selective miracles that you claim to have witnessed or know someone who knew someone, who talked to someone whose brother-in-law got healed of something. I'm talking about a God who would do that randomly and selectively and little children die of bone cancer. Tell me how that makes sense to you. All I'm, all I'm talking about is I can't debate that with you. I can't at all debate that. That is, that is not something that is possible to talk about. I can show you a published medical journal that has a documented miracle. And, and so, do, do, so what, what, is your, what is the journal? I, I just posted it in chat. Can you see chat? I'll post it again. No, I don't um, think you can I'll, post links I'll, in chat, dude. What is the name of the journal? I don't want the link. So, I want the name of the journal. 
And, and beyond that, what's your okay. point of all this, Paul? So what? Let, let, let's cut to the chase. So what's your, what are you trying to establish here with these, with these miracles that you're posting links to? Uh, that the uh, current situation in terms of God, uh, you asked earlier in the show, where is a, uh, a current event that would prove the existence of God? My posit or my assertion is that the Bible has made a claim. It's a supernatural no, claim. No, no, the Bible, the, the Bible, the Bible doesn't make any. The Bible prophecies are are bad at best, wrong in some cases, and taking quotes out of context in others. So, and I don't care what the Bible says until first you prove God. So I don't, I don't really care what the I Bible guess, says. Uh, is your point, Paul, that you're? saying that these um, references to miracles, these documented miracles, as you say, are proof of God? Uh, so Exodus fifteen twenty six says, I am the God that heals. I don't so, care. I don't care what Exodus says. I don't the, care what the, the, Bible, the Bible says. The, first the Bible, proof God exists. I, I don't care what the Bible says about healing. I, I, who cares? That's a man-made the, Hobbit, the Hobbit is claimed to be written by by Bilbo Baggins. Should I accept everything he's, that that he says without first proving Bilbo exists? No. So first prove your God exists, then you can quote the Bible at us. What is the name of the journal, the medical journal that that quote that that your paper is from? What is the name of the journal, please? Uh, ScienceDirect.com. I'll just I'll read you the link. No, 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 no. You don't no. need to do that. I'm going to do, I'm going in a completely hey. different direction. Paul, do you uh, want to serve a God who heals your broken toe but doesn't heal a baby of bone cancer? Is that the kind of God you want to serve? Um, so I, I can't really talk to that. It's, it's a very long no, I'm, okay. Why not? Why I, not? I, why not? I think, it's a simple question. So you my, want to prove God's existence because he healed, healed your toe and some demon cast out in Haiti. But this God continues to let children die, innocent children, that he could, if he's a God who heals you, if I'm the Lord who heals you, how come he's not doing it to the babies born with cancer? So, and if you don't want to speak to that, it's because you don't want to wrestle with that kind of a question. That's the bottom line. I can, I can absolutely wrestle with that. I can. My sister was murdered. This is the reason why I started down this path of trying to understand why bad things happen to people. I was in a very, very, very bad place, uh, considered suicide, et cetera. Um, and this is, this is kind of where I turned to uh, God for any sort of help in this place. So because of that situation, I went through a period of, of fasting to try to understand, just put any, any kind of understanding around why this terrible thing happened to my family. And as a result of that, God uh, showed me uh, just some things I, I wouldn't say that he, he wrote. Okay, yeah. So real quick, and then and, and uh, we're going to start wrapping this up here. But um, so you put yourself in a position where you can hallucinate, and your brain is not functioning at full power to come up with uh, answers to questions you had. Does that sound like a a good thing to do? Uh, that. Uh, part of fasting happens. I guess that's not really the uh, the part that I was moving towards. But yeah, I mean, you're right. Sure. That's okay. So well, basically to recap, just to make sure you presented evidence that you claim was a uh, demon being cast out, but it was probably fraud. Um, your toe probably healed naturally. And you have, and, and you were talking about a, an article from uh, a website that actually looks like it might actually have good science on it. Um, I need to do more research. Um, and but, you put yourself in a state that where your brain's not working really well, and you might be hallucinating to come up with answers to hard questions. I, None of that and, sounds like proof of God. It sounds like just a, a, another and, failure. And Paul, let me let me speak to what you're you you were in a in a vulnerable spot. I understand. Sorry about your sister, by the way, but. And, and, and you were in a vulnerable spot and looking for, as you said, reasons why this would happen. We all want to understand why things happen or how things happen. But sometimes the answer to that is we just don't know. And, and the idea of coming up with, with a God that gives us some kind of understanding of those things 
is is pretty elusive. Now, I'm, you may not be aware that I was diagnosed two years ago with ALS, which is a terminal disease that's no cure, and I'm given, at the time, given three to five years to live. Well, I've had symptoms for three years now, so I'm on the I'm on the back end of that, and um, I could very well um, start looking again or revisiting this idea of God, and maybe I made a mistake by. Um, by turning away from God 10 years ago. But none of that ever crossed my mind because I'm of the opinion that life just happens. And there are not always reasons for why bad things happen to good people or why bad things happen at all. It's just a chaotic world that we live in. And I randomly got ALS when only a very small percentage of the population of the world ever gets it. And so that just happens and life just happens. And so turning or looking for some kind of a an answer to that and then finding solace in the comfort of a deity is a very natural um, and normal experience for humans we all want that but it doesn't make it true it just doesn't and then trying to scramble around and trying to find proof for that doesn't make it true either uh, i'm i understand that you want comfort you want something some answers when there doesn't appear to be any, but it doesn't, uh, creating answers where there are no answers doesn't make it, doesn't make it any better. We just fool ourselves. And I would, I would hope for you to do better than that. But question, if you were cured of ALS, which currently there is no cure. And correct. Someone prayed, and someone prayed on you at the time that you were cured. Would you conclude there is a God or would you conclude it was a spontaneous uh, regeneration of science or some other explanation? I would I would not jump to the conclusion that was a God. No. And and further than that, I wouldn't if 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 it was a person praying for me was claiming that was the God of the Bible. You could prove the God of the Bible to me tonight. I still wouldn't worship him because he's an ogre based on what the Bible says about him. So. I'm not interested in that God whatsoever. All right. And what you have okay. are two correlated events. Correlation does not prove causation. You would still need to prove causation. And the correct response is we don't know. And I suspect that were that to happen, uh, Dave would become the medical uh, world's uh, most favorite guinea pig at that point because everybody would want to know how that happened. And yeah. they would probably come up with, an, uh, with a reason. And it probably would not be prayer. There have so been anyway, some documented reversals of ALS, by the way, but it had nothing to do with God or prayer. So, right. Anyway, Moving thanks on. a lot, Paul. We appreciate your thanks, call. Paul. Have a good day. All right. So, crew, do we have time for one more, or are we close to out of time? I'm not paying. I was not. I'm not paying attention well enough. Oh, what the heck? We'll do one more. All right, so here we go. Um, we got one more. All right, Elizabeth in the United Kingdom. Hi, I'd ask you how you're hi. doing so well, but I, 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 I suspect it's not as good as it could be. <laughs> yeah, I'm I sort of really related to what Dave said just now. Um, so, like... Um, I uh, I'm very disabled, and uh, I was like feeling really down, and um, my disabilities are getting worse. I've got I'm living with three life threatening conditions. I'm going blind and deaf, and mm. so like these fundamentalist Christians were like really n nice and kind to me. Um, we're like in the middle of a pandemic, and all the social support here got stopped, you know, and I'm isolated. Then what happened, so like, you know, because of all that, not not because, because of intellectual reasons, more because of like a response, like emotional reasons, I started like believing in God and Christian love and all that sort of stuff. And then like my, I got a son, he's in, he, he was in Australia. Um, he was training as a medical student and he, he got um, COVID-19 and he died. Oh my goodness! I'm of, so sorry like, to hear that. You know, thank you. Um, sorry, you Elizabeth. You get me crying. Yeah. So um, the point is that you know, 
so he died. Uh, and, he, you know, like, he sacrificed his life for other people, basically. So I went back to this Christian church. And when I, like, faced them with something real, you know, I went back to them and I sort of said, you know what, my son, who was who was a medical student, and, and was, he was working overtime and volunteering, and he died of COVID-19. And the first thing they said to me was, was he a Christian? And I said, no. And they said, then he's gone to hell. And if you were any sort of mother, you would have helped him go to heaven. And I just like, it was like my brain exploded. You know, like, they don't even have normal human empathy. Mm-mm. They're just like, no. it was uh, like beyond belief. Uh, beyond belief. Just... Uh, yeah, I would have done more than have my head explode. I think I would have exploded. Yeah, and there I would have want... been some very, very unhappy people because I want their phone numbers. I'm going to call them. <laughs> <Yeah>. um... <laughs> no, no, we're not going to do I'm... that. We're not. not, not I'm, uh... no, no, no. As I'm much as kidding. I'd really like kidding. to put them on blast with the the, the crew that we have. Um, no, in I, chat. I would call them personally and give them hell. But <laughs> Elizabeth, I'm so sorry, honey. Yeah, I'm yeah. So sorry. For, for all so of now, that, you know yeah, what? Ahead, I'm I... sorry. I, you know, like, like I really related to what, to what Dave said. Even if there was a God, I actually sent them an email and saying, do you know what, if heaven exists, I don't want to be in it if it's full of people like you. I'd rather go yeah. to hell and be with yeah. my son than be in a heaven with yeah. people like you. And even oh, if there God, is I'm a so God, sorry. I don't want to know him. Yeah? Yeah. So, to me, well, I don't that, care whether there's a God or not. So, yeah. yeah. That's the problem. Because they're not I, human. I, no. They're not human. They're not. And, and you're right. You're right. They don't have basic empathy, Elizabeth. And I, um, w- since I've been doing the Dying Out Loud thing and I, I got diagnosed with ALS, I talk a lot about life and death and, and what's after death and, and things like that. But one of the things I've talked about a lot, and I really believe this, and Christians have what I what I've called a fetish for the afterlife. And what I think happens is that when you when you expend so much energy thinking about what the next life is like, you don't you lose track of this life. And this life doesn't have the value that it should have. And I find that to be a tragedy. And I've seen that in my own experience with Christians as they've reacted to my my terminal disease. I have a lot of Christians in my family and and they're disappointed in my departure from faith and into atheism. And, and they've not known how to react to my ALS diagnosis. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to talk to me about it. So they don't talk to me. They just basically leave me alone. Whereas the atheist friends in my life, which is most of the people I do life with, they are there in the middle of it with me. They, they, they say, we want to, we want to soak as much, of this life as we can with you. We want to get everything we can out of this life because we know that this is a, this is the only life we have. There's nothing coming after. Mm-hmm. If there is, fine, but the evidence doesn't support that. So I'm going with the understanding that this life is the only one we have. And and for the Christians, they don't know what to do with that. And I'm very sorry that they did that to you. It's 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 inhuman. It's the worst kind of cruelty to to dump that on you after the loss of your of your child, and I just can't tell you enough how sorry I am that you had to deal with that. And and um, I wish I wish you weren't in the UK because I'd love to give you a hug. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you I, know, I, I, you know, the, the thing is, I I thought the best thing I can do for my son's memory is to live the best life I can for as long as I absolutely, can. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. can you can you and see the the it. chat on on YouTube right now, Elizabeth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, <laughs> you see the love. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Oh. So oh, I, thank I, I, you. I thank you. Yeah, so much. And you thank you said you. you were lonely. Um, let me introduce you to the folks that are there in chat. Um, also oh. on Facebook, if you're there. Uh, we have the Atheist Experience fan group. There's a private one if you don't want to be outed. There's a public one if you don't care. You can do both. Um, we have a, a Discord group, too, that will get posted either in chat or on our links that you can go in and talk 
with this entire wonderful, awesome community that is here for you right now. Um, and we'll definitely not tell you you're going, going to hell. Um, they will definitely empathize with you. You have people like, like Dave, who's going through something similar and there are people in chat and on the discord who are also there, um, to help you through it. So please, just because you can't get out of the house right now because of COVID, um, you know, the, the virtual stuff works better than just yeah. than not doing it all. So please reach out to those communities. Tell them you're Elizabeth and, from UK on this call. They'll know exactly who you are. And and, and Elizabeth, one, one step further, I'm, I please follow uh, my Dave Out Loud, Dying Out Loud stuff. Connect with me through my, face, through my Facebook or my website. And, and my girlfriend and I, Bevan, we're going to be traveling to we have plans to be in Europe and the UK in September, as long as things open up, which I'm yeah. trusting that they will um, that by then. But I, I don't know where in the UK you are, but we're going to be seeing a lot of different people in the UK that, that I, I've been wanting to meet, that we have friends there. And I would just love, love, love to hug your neck if it's possible at that time. So please connect with me and stay in touch. would be nice. Thank you. I don't need God now. I've got you. Atheist. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. I hope things God, get better soon. Breaks my heart. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. What is wrong with them, Jim? That people, oh. Christians, could say that to her. What the hell? What the hell is wrong with people? I. Yeah. So. Uh. Uh, sorry, I just, yeah, um, I was not paying attention to the fact the thing was falling out of my ear. I don't know what's wrong with Christians who do that. Um, the, the, the total lack of empathy that their position gives them is absolutely terrifying blows, sometimes. It blows my mind. It just blows me. Yeah. And that's, what I, that's why I talk about this fetish for the afterlife they have, like this life doesn't matter. We were taught that. This life is just a breath and it doesn't really matter and all that matters is that you prepare for the afterlife god damn i hate that yeah oh and elizabeth if you're still listening um don't forget about recovering from religion i did forget yes. um please, to mention please them. tap into them yeah so you've yeah. got dave's community you've got the the a aca's community and, and the online community with with uh with the shows um recovering from religion um, and then secular, uh, secular therapy project too. Yeah. Um, if you feel you need that help as well. So please, I've uh, there's a, there's a link those. to, there's a link to recovering from religion on my website, just to make it easy mm -hmm. to get to, if you can't remember it. Right. And All right, so they, they said we've yeah. got 30 more minutes. I guess we got a few more calls if they're there. Yeah. Well, so we're going to, uh, Theists, call in. We've got we've got room for you. So we're gonna take some atheist calls in the meantime while waiting for uh, some theists to call in. And this first one is Anton in Maryland. Morality. Do you think morality is something that, that can or should be taught in schools? Um, Dave, do you want to take that one or morality taught in schools? Um. Geez, I think so. I mean, I have never thought of that, but I, I, um, I don't see. I, obviously, it's not a bad thing to teach morality, but I mean, you you've got to you you have to then question from from where do you get that morality? I certainly don't don't want to espouse getting a, an idea of morality from any kind of religion or the Bible. But being when it, when you say teach morality, I would say I would I would assume you mean teaching kindness and generosity and basic human human um, uh, things that benefit us in in our interactions with each other and in in society. So yeah, teaching people basic human decency and kindness and don't don't do things that hurt people. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think. I mean, what do you think, Jim? I've I've never thought about that yeah. as. Well, let's give Anton schools. a chance to respond because he hasn't had a chance to talk yet. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Damn. Sorry. <laughs> hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's nice to talk to you both. I'll be very quick. Uh, uh -huh. Jim and Dave, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, sorry to hear about your ALS, Dave. Um, I didn't know you were going through that. Um, but, yeah, it Thank was you. kind of a question that was um, 
I was talking to my mom about um at this point I hadn't come out to her that I was an atheist, but I know that she is a a, a non practicing theist. And one of the things she was kind of adamant about was like she thinks morality should be taught in schools. And it wasn't really something I'd given any thought to, and I didn't really kind of want to engage her in that without kind of having thought about it myself. Hmm. But I don't know. I, I still haven't really thought about it, and I was kind of just curious what you guys' thoughts were, and maybe I had some talking points on that. Yeah, I'm so morality for me has has religious connotations and religious baggage to it, so I kind of prefer ethics. Um, yeah, and I think word. that. I think that ethics and, and epistemology need to be taught more in schools. Um, and not just this is good, this is bad, but how to think about ethical situations. Um, because we're coming into some really, really interesting places technology-wise with self-driving cars and, and other things like that, um, where we have to look at who who's at fault if a car runs over a pedestrian? Who's at fault? What are the ethics of that situation? If it's you know if a self-driving car does that, um, is it the fault of the programmers, or is it the fault of the programming, or is it a fault of our understanding of the ethics of the situation, and therefore the car couldn't do the right thing? Um, so yeah, I I think it should be taught because we we have a lot more ethical questions today than we we have in the past. Right when when you're an agrarian society, right and wrong, good and evil are pretty simple stuff. But when you live in a society where you have to debate, in what order do you give out vaccines for deadly diseases? Yeah, <laughs> right. That's a good point. Yeah, um, yeah, we yeah, definitely need it. <laughs> I didn't tell um, you know to your point about your mom. I guess if she were to you know ask you that or has asked you that, then yeah, I think. I think Jim makes a good point about ethics versus morality because morality does seem to have some religious connotations. That's why I kind of hesitated a little bit to even, you know, go down that road with teaching it. But yeah, you can teach basic ethics. Is I would say to her, as long as you're not, you know, attaching some religious baggage to it and some deity or some uh, a holy book uh, to give you the guideline for what what is ethically or morally right or wrong then uh then yeah i think we can you know talk about those things okay yeah i i completely agree and that was a, a really good way to look at that it's something i hadn't considered so i appreciate the input guys mm -hmm. all right good luck Thanks, um yeah I'll, I'll, I'll call back another whoops i cut him off before he finished my apologies I did not mean to be rude. I just already hit the button. Okay, so we got a theist on here, and this will tie into our previous question, our previous topic quite nicely. It's Paul in Michigan, if I know what I means. Um, you want to want to know where atheist morality comes from? Well, I just if you don't, not necessarily atheistic, but if you don't have a moral arbiter of some sort, who decides? what morality is and if if it's just society then why is there a problem with like then you what you're essentially telling me is that evil is necessary or evil wrongdoing is necessary in order for us to know that it's wrong you know what mm, i'm saying no not not quite so first of all let's just drop the words uh good and evil because uh they're just simply labels that we put on events and they have some religious baggage. Yeah. We can talk about good and bad. Um, and so what I use personally is empathy and well, uh, happiness. Um, some people call it well-being, but I actually prefer happiness um, as the two things that I use as guidelines for whether or not an action I'm getting ready to perform is good or bad. So if it maximizes happiness, has a positive impact on other people's lives, that is a good thing. If I have a negative impact on things, it has a bad thing. If it's the least empathetic thing I can do, like a church telling a woman that her son is going to hell because he died not a Christian, um, that is bad. That has a negative impact on people's lives. So that's what, that's what I use. Okay. I would agree with that statement, actually. Um, I would never tell someone their son's going to hell because they weren't a Christian. I would 
you know, if they don't follow Jesus, that's a different story. But um, but the, re- the reason why wait, what? Up is... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, you, you you lost me there. Uh, being a Christian and following Jesus well, is kind some, of the same thing, right? Well, yes, technically, but there are some people who don't like that label, so they just say, well, I'm a follower of Jesus, or I'm not a, you know. And then there are some Christians who are not really saved, believe it or not. You know, Jesus talks about in the Bible, it talks about the goats versus the sheep. So mm-hmm. no 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 true no true Scotsman that's right. What I, so in, in your view, if if well, her son no, wasn't following no Jesus, true Scotsman. He, that's just but in, that's just in your in your, in your view, if her son wasn't a yeah. follower of Jesus, he would go to hell. Yes, but not not because God is. And if and if you if she if she were to ask you that point blank, what would you tell her? I, I would say that I'm not the judge. I'm not the arbiter here. You know, that's so that, you dodge the you question. Know, he may have. Yeah, that's so you wouldn't answer the question, then you would just. I wouldn't dodge. The that question. is dodging the question. Part of the individual. Well, I can't right. truly know your heart, so I can't. Let's 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 make it personal. I've got a fatal disease, and I'm going to die in a few years. And I'm an atheist, and I used to be a Christian, and I've I've rejected God and walked away from Him. When I die, what's going to happen to me, Paul? Well, unfortunately, that's that is the you know that is what exactly what you're saying is that you would die apart from God. And you think you think that's so not, you think hell? Do you think hell is moral? Yes. So you Why? think hell is moral? Do you think punishing an infinite punishment for a finite crime is moral? No, no, no. It, it, this is the misunderstanding of what hell is. See, most people think. Oh. That way, <laughs> in lightness. That's the way the church portrays it. But hell is actually the epitome of the total opposite of who God is. So if you don't want God, then you know God's not going to force Himself on you either. And so if you don't want God, then you're left with whatever. So the hell opposite. is not punishment. Hell is not punishment. So, is what you're saying. It is, it is punishment, but it's not in. The okay, place. so let me let me go let me go back to my original statement. You wanted to go to hell. Is, well, let me go back to my original question. Is an infinite crime or is an, is an infinite punishment justified by a finite crime? And beyond that, to add to tack onto that, not believing in Jesus is not even a crime. I didn't do anything wrong. I haven't hurt anyone. I haven't right. we're talking about we started talking about moral morality. I haven't. Yeah. Hurt anyone? Right. I haven't killed that's... anyone. I haven't stolen. I haven't done anything yeah. that would be worthy of punishment. And yet, because I say I don't believe that Jesus died for my sins, I'm going to be eternally punished. As you said, it's a punishment. And Jim says, "Do you think that's justifiable?" According, well, if you according to the the Bible, if you have lied, then you. No, I'm, I'm asking you. Oh, I don't care boy. what the Bible says. <laughs> I really Ray don't Comfort. care what the Here Bible says. I want to know <laughs> well, even if way, you think you guys. Let's I'm take the Bible out think. of it, Paul. We're talking about morality, and I asked you okay. if you thought hell well, is moral. Well, that's where I derive my morality from. Now, personally, I figured that's that. Where I, I figured that morality from. So and so, so that, because the Bible, the because the, the Bible no, supports hold on, hell. Hold on. Okay, you're dodging the question, though. The question I'm asking is. If there is no moral arbiter, and it doesn't have to be the Bible, it could be, you know, Allah or whoever. Uh, and I've already answered that question. Work. We've answered that Jim question. Jim answered that. I, I threw it back at you, and I said, you're you're saying that the Bible teaches an eternal punishment. Jim says, is eternal punishment justifiable for a finite crime, even if that supposed crime is simply not believing in Jesus? And you're saying, because the Bible says it, Sorry, it's true. No, 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 no. I'm saying, so what you're telling me is that slavery was a necessary evil because... No, 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 no. Leave slavery out of it. Leave slavery out of it. You're so not answering the question. Do you think that that infinite punishment is justified by a finite crime? Is that moral? Is it moral to provide an infinite punishment for a finite crime? Is that moral? It's a yes or no question. I would say no, but... 
Okay. It's not a fine. So you agree? Either. You agree that your God is immoral? I don't. <clears throat> How, how is that? <laughs> you just you? did. God God specifies <laughs> that for a finite crime, you go to hell forever. Does he or does he not specify that? Is that or is that not part of the Bible? No, he, he specifies what sin is, yeah. But sin is ultimately a rejection of him. So you're... No, you're so I, I, that's what I'm calling a crime. Oh, because of rejection so of him. is, is... Can is is there any sin that is infinite, or is all sin finite? Oh, is it actually? It has. You're, you're, I'm sorry, you're breaking up quite a bit. You're breaking up. Um, I can't hear you, Paul. Yeah. So, but again, I, I it's a yes or no question. It, I find it remarkable the links that Christians go to to defend the concept of hell, and the and the and the loops that you the hoops that you jump jump through to make it sound okay. The idea of anyone suffering forever in, in, in some form of punishment, whether you believe it's annihilation or darkness or burning fire or just separation from God, which you can obviously consider to be a very bad thing. If, if I'm separated for eternity from the God of the Bible, I'm pretty good with that because I'm not too fond of that dude. So, you know, I guess your definition of God and mine are going to be worlds apart, but nonetheless. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. So, if, according to the Bible, sin is not a finite issue. It has far-reaching beyond beyond just you. Okay, so let's take so, the sin of yeah. lying. Let's take, let's take, let's take a specific, a okay. specific sin, lying. Is lying a yeah. finite thing? Is it bounded by time? No, it, because you've got yeah. trust issues after that, depending on the lie. Now, if it's a small lie, yeah, you could you could justify that it is a finite thing. But if you're lying to your spouse and there's trust issues. Mm. But, but, right, but all those trust issues end when you're dead because everything at that point is known. So lying is a finite sin. All sin is finite because all sin ends when you're dead, when you get, according to, to you, <coughs> you get judged. So all sin is finite for which you get punished infinitely with no ability to redress your sin. That is moral to you. Is that correct? Is that yes, correct? The first yes statement? or no. It's it's not that you're se it's a separation you're separated from God. You chose to. Yes, you're not answering the question. It's that's a yes or no question. Is Do that you is agree? that eternal punishment moral or not? Yes or no. Yes. Yes. Why? Okay. What makes it moral? Why? Well, what makes it immoral is because God is the ultimate. Okay, so God divine command theory. He can decide. Your, your ethical system is called yeah. divine command theory, right? Right. Let me ask you this final yeah. question. If God told you to go kill your child, would you do it? Yes, if it, if it was God who told you. Me. Are mm -hmm. You yeah, are immoral. You are a monster. Yeah, that's your definition of your definition of morality is twisted and sick. And just because you get it from the Bible doesn't make it okay. And I right. want nothing to do with that kind of morality. Nothing. Yeah, you are to do with that. by de by our definition evil. You are wrong. You are immoral. And that's where we're going to end this call because I have no further desire to talk to somebody so fucking immoral <laughs> as to kill their own child because some God told them to. Bye bye yeah. Jesus I mean, fucking Christ. That's actually happened in real life, not just the Bible, but people, <laughs> people parents who have gone insane have heard voices telling them to kill their children because they're going to be better off in heaven. That's right. what we call insanity. That's yes. not fucking morality. Right. That that is so fucking wrong. Uh, God, fuck. And William, yeah, Th William Lane Craig all over again. You can tell yeah. he's pulling from William Lane Craig and Ray Comfort. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, so. Let's go with, this is another atheist caller. We got time caller. for one more? Yeah, Lee in California. Go ahead. 
Hi, how are you doing? Hey, um, well, I need a shower now that I just talked to that previous Theus caller just <laughs> yeah. to wash the evil Jim, off me. But yeah, he got he got Jim all upset. Jim's all upset now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get over it quickly because I saw you're on the show and um, okay, what's that? Which I was diagnosed with uh, ataxia. Not sure if you know what it is. It's a progressive neurological disorder. Um, what's it called, Lee? I'm sorry, I missed the I'm first a- part. Ataxia, A-T-A-X-I-A. Not familiar with it, but it's a neurological disease? Yeah, it mimics Parkinson's or MS. Um, oh, okay, gotcha. So um, I, I'm an atheist, and I don't believe in karma or heaven or any of these things, but I cannot shake the sense that I have somehow taken upon this or earned this affliction, and I don't know how to get past that. Hmm. Experience that. Yeah. Um, were you ever a Christian? Yeah, I was actually a preacher in the Church of Christ. Okay. I think that's where that's coming from, Lee. Um, I understand. I mean, when I got diagnosed with ALS, I've, I've, I've been on a lot of podcasts and shows, and people have asked me a lot, you know, did you feel like God was punishing you? Did you consider returning to God? any of that stuff. And, and, and no, 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 no. And I think maybe what your my initial response to that would be that you've got some baggage left over from that. I think church of Christ is pretty severe in terms of what they consider sin and, and, and judgment and those kind of things. And how long have you been out of that? May, may I ask? Oh, I, I, I've been an atheist. Uh, I'm 36 now. I think I can I deconverted when I was 24. But my my guilt isn't necessarily related to God. It's actually like I, there's almost this rolodex of bad memories of things that I've done to people or said to people that I wish I hadn't. You know, I I said things to my husband that when I look back, I, I'm just completely embarrassed of. And that's what I think sure. was coming from. And I think, holy crap, I'm coming closer to my life than I thought I would be. I mean, it's not. It's it can be chronic or it can be terminal. Right now, we don't know what it is. So I, I'm assuming I have at least twenty to thirty years, but just imagine. Mm-hmm. That. I've said things to my parents. I've said things to my spouse, um, and and I think that yeah. maybe maybe I, I you know I, I, I was too sharp tongued this time, and this I know it's not because the universe has no will or agency, and I know this intellectually, but I just can't seem to internalize it. I, I understand. I do. I've, I'm actually working on a book of my life and I um, I'm writing things and going revisiting my life. And I made a lot of mistakes and made bad choices and did things that hurt people. And having to revisit that and write about it is painful. Um, but I, I have adopted a strategy in the last couple of years. It's a quote I heard that encapsulates it from Maya Angelou. And it simply says, do the best you can do until you know better and then when you know better do better and that allows me if i if i revisit that often then it allows me to not dwell with a lot of regret because we we can all look back and and wish we'd done something different or hadn't done that or hadn't gone there or hadn't said that and it can haunt us and but regret is too costly of an emotion to live with and i would just encourage you to find a way to um, dig deep and put that stuff aside and realize that you didn't get some disease because of bad stuff you did. That's just not how things work. Uh, it You got it because life is random and chaotic and I got ALS just because I got it. My, my position on that is who am I to say I didn't deserve to get it? Who am I to say that some other person should have gotten it instead of me? Life happens and, and I just happen to be one that this disease attacked for some unknown reason that no one knows and never will know. It just happened. And now I have to choose how am I going to play the cards I've been dealt to use an old analogy. And you do too. And my, my hope is that you'll find a way to grab as many good moments as you can in life and to carpe the fucking diem and to live the best life you can and try really hard not to look back, but to look forward. And I know that's not always easy, but I, I my my hope is that you can find ways to do that because that's what I'm doing. To my best, yeah. And I would I would add to the the carpe fucking diem, um, amor fate, love your fate. 
Um, you can't do anything else about it. You might as well enjoy what you can of it and mm-hmm. embrace it with both arms and don't let go of it because, it, I mean, it is what it is. And, and fighting and railing against it, it's not going to do anybody any good. It's a natural reaction. Sure. Um, and it's one that has to be gone through. But, you know, get get through that as quickly as you can and get to a point where you, you can accept it. It's not so much about whether or not you deserve it. It's about, well, we get to deal with it now and, and moving forward from there. Hey, Lee, uh, also, like I told Elizabeth from UK, connect with me on my stuff. Follow along. Let's let's stay connected. And like I told her, we're actually gonna, we're trying to do a lot of traveling because my window for that is closing. I'm, I'm fighting against time yeah. myself. And so um we're going to be in California in June. I don't know where you are, but we're going to be all over the state. So we'd love to have a drink. Bro. I'm in San Diego. Yeah. Okay. We're, yeah, hopefully yeah. we're open by then. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we will be. Um, so send me a message, connect with me, and let's let's stay in touch, boo. Okay? I like that. Thank you so much. Okay, Lee. Good. Right. Thanks for calling, man. Thanks, Lee. Mm, bye. Mm, well, that's tough, man. Yeah. Yeah. A, All right. An emotional roller coaster of a show, Man, without a doubt. It was, wasn't it? Sadness wow. to anger to really, really, really deep abiding anger to <laughs> Yeah. To losing our <laughs> shit a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Dave, where can we find you? Uh, DaveOutloud.com has links to all my stuff, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, there's the links. Uh, Dying Out Loud on Facebook. If you haven't friended me, uh, send me a friend. I've got Twitter. Follow me on TikTok. I get on there and post little videos every now and then and argue with these uh, Christian zealots who all seem to be about 20 years old. My God, they remind me of me 40 years ago. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, well, folks, thank you so much. Um, for those of you who are in Discord, I will be there in a couple of minutes. Dave, are you going to join us over there? Yeah, let me go. Let me go visit the men's room. And um, I got. Uh, how do I find you on Discord? By the way, I don't know. I don't even know. Um, we'll get you someone to shoot you the link to to the yeah, Discord. Yeah, shoot me a link, and I'll pop in. All right, and then one more time, let's thank our wonderful crew who have been working so hard behind the scenes. And it forced me to end the show because they took away all my collars. <laughs> there the are all the awesome. cats. <laughs> They're the best. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the hard work you put in, into and in dealing with the callers who didn't make it. And I know those stories very well because uh, you keep telling me them and I appreciate it. So thank you all for joining us this week. And we'll be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thanks, everybody. Right away. Yeah.